All right, this is the big moment. Uh, YouTube, obviously, when it comes to Marawa TV, you've been waiting, you've been anticipating, but right now it is the right moment. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey as we amble along on Thursday Night Live with Marawa. You said it, I didn't say it. You wanted it, you've got it. So interact with us right throughout the show. It's a whole hour of absolute bliss, and we've got to interact with our guests. We've got to talk about what's happening over the weekend. Uh, the president has already addressed the entire nation and parliament, saying that, you know what, we've got to step things up. You know what, you've got to wear our Springbok jerseys, and you know what, we've got to bring that Webb Ellis trophy back to Mzanzi. Everybody's been calculating 12 years, 12 years, 12 years. Yeah, it is going to be 12 years now, 2019. So why not? Bring it back. Make it happen. And of course, they're going to be brilliant on the field. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually on the couch. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Mr. Kusai, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. <laughs> I'm brilliant. How are you? <laughs> I think we all want to be brilliant at some point. Eh? But just the energy uh, that we want to see coming through for the Springboks. I mean, as a football player yourself, you would know that they need every bit of luck that they can get right now. Go pokey, go pokey. <laughs> but we are behind the boys, we are behind yeah. the boys. Yeah. Do you watch much rugby though? Not that much, but um, when it comes to, to, to the Springboks, I always do watch them. And you obviously know who they're playing against, right? No. Okay. I'll tell you somebody who knows. <laughs> He's right here, Lebuang Manyam. Star player. And we're talking rugby, in fact, while we're waiting to go live on air. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mr. Rob. I'm always an honor, you know. Hey? Always an honor. <laughs> <laughs> he was telling me that he was almost a scrum half uh, <laughs> in terms of rugby. No, 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 no. I said I, I watch the sport. I watch a lot of sports, but not to, with rugby, not to play. You wouldn't try play. any other sport, but no. Nah, well, what are you scared of? The injuries? It looks hectic for 80 minutes. It's, it's Why? Like, no, but you see, they're always, they're always bashing each other. And, and obviously, I'm not that big yet. No, no, but so you look at guys like <laughs> Chelsea and Colby, they're not very big. Yeah, but you, you he's always at the back. There's, there's guys that are there. So no, imagine. but that's a scrum. See, I don't know the position. Sorry. Yeah, the but, scrum, uh, you need all the, the big guys with the big bellies. You know, Kennedy will tell you about <laughs> it. Uh, but he's not obviously one of those. So there's a, there's a major Thank difference. God. We'll break it down, though, because <laughs> you're looking forward to two great events that are happening. It's a Talcom knockout. It's a quarterfinal stage. So it's not just about the Soweto Derby. Yes, the Soweto Derby. It's not going to be in Soweto. It's going to be in KZN. Yeah, Moses might be the stadium. That's where it's going to feature. And Kennedy Zimba, Hall of Famer, yeah, as far as world rugby is concerned, back in 2012. It's good to have you here. No, it's good to be here, Rob. And it's, it's good that uh, we'll be able to, to get this on YouTube. Some of us only have YouTube. We don't have any other oh, wow. means. So it's, it's good. And I'm Big glad. Big round of applause to this I'm man. Glad. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Away, away, away. Yeah. yeah, and um, I'm also must say I was impressed by their rugby knowledge before we got on air. It's, 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 I'm, I'm kind of ashamed that they don't want to talk more about the rugby now, <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. They don't want to lose some street cred. I <laughs> so guess. You, so, you will lose yeah? street cred if you start talking rugby around around the street. Yeah. But what are the nerves like, though? I mean, l let's be honest. It's a it's one of those nervy moments. We're all waiting to see uh, who Rassi Rasmus was going to put through, how many changes he was going to make, and you got to feel for Swoon yeah. He's not yeah. going to make even you know the 23, and yet he was there last week. He was part of it, but then you you, you think back again. Two major players mm. were injured. They back home. They're not going to be there. Yeah. So it's a it's a hit and miss. But what is it like now? Yeah. Well, I think you know you got to feel for those guys. At the same time, guys like Chisholm Kobe have played well and obviously got the team to where we are. And I think with Rassi, the way he's made that team become a unit, I think some of the guys don't really mind you not know, not being there as long as the the cup comes back, as you're saying, bring it back. As long as it comes back, the rest of the guys won't worry about uh, whether they played or not because they get the medal. Yeah. And that's all that's important, I think. Yeah. I mean, we're going to touch on something quite important because it's also a really important one as far as the captain of the Springboks is concerned, and that is Usia Kolisi coming in for his whew, 50th. Mm. Not too many get to 50 caps, I can tell you that much. Well, talking about caps, he might not need them in Cape Town. Uh, that is Gershwin Kutsia, he's <laughs> our uh, Cape Town correspondent. And one of the things that he did was he hopped around to Hartleyvale and went to attend a training session of one of the hot teams who are not really hot this season. They were hot last season and the season before. But something somewhere is not going right for Benny McCarthy's uh, Cape Town City. But you know what? Bafana Bafana squad was announced. 
Gershwin decided to pluck up a couple of the players from there, relevant to the conversation around Bafana Bafana. Gershwin, what's cooking? Thanks, Rob. Great to have you back on a Thursday. As you mentioned, uh, Bafana Bafana coach Molef Nseki has named a 25-man squad for upcoming 2021 Afghan qualifiers against Ghana and Sudan, respectively. Joining me in Cape Town is the one and only, they call him Romero. How are you, Kermit Erasmus? I'm good, thanks yourself. All right, so you were part of the recent Bafana Bafana squad for the Nelson Mandela Challenge. You were left out of the final squad for AFCON 2019 in Egypt. You now have a chance to play a massive role for Bafana Bafana. Uh, your thoughts on being included in the squad and what you're hoping to achieve? Yeah, obviously, it's always an honour to be part of the squad, uh, whether it's uh, international friendly or qualification game. And, you know, for us as players, there's nothing, there's no bigger stage in the national team. You know, and it's a great opportunity for us to to try and qualify again for the AFCON, you know. And then we have the World Cup qualifiers next year, so the first step is uh, Ghana home, uh, Ghana away and Sudan home. So uh, we already we already had information on how travelling would go and where we would be playing, so we are mentally prepared for that and we, we don't go, we're not going there with anything else but just to play the game and, and try and get the three points. As any player, you want to represent your country at the highest level. Uh, for yourself to be left out of the 2019 AFCON squad, the final squad, uh, did that damper your spirit at all? No, not at all. I mean, it's all gone and, and behind me. You know, it's, yes, it was disappointing at the time, but you know, life goes on. Uh, my career goes on, and for me, it's just about focusing on what I'm capable of controlling and trying to do that. All right. So you did mention that you want to do your best. You want to score um, at the national team. You're one of three strikers that's been included. Yeah, definitely. It's. Uh, it's a great bunch of players, you know. The the national team is, cons is consisted of all the all the best players in the country, also in Europe, but that are from South Africa. So I think it's a great team that's been assembled, you know, to represent the country, and hopefully we can make the nation proud and, and give everything and do well and try and get the maximum points. Kevin Rasmus, thank you so much for joining us right here on Marawa TV. And that is uh, Caitlin City striker and also Bafana Bafana striker uh, Kermit Erasmus talking to us about the upcoming qualifiers against Ghana and Sudan. Talking about fixtures, let's take a look at the upcoming fixtures that Bafana Bafana will be playing. The team will meet for camp on Sunday the 10th of November and depart for Accra, Ghana the following day. They then face the Black Stars three days later on the 14th and travel home to welcome Sudan on Sunday the 17th. Now, Coach Nsiki believes he's done his homework on his opponents and coach. Analysis and profiling of, of Ghana. Um, I think we played Ghana in Dubai, and there's not much of a change in terms of the player, the playing personnel. And uh, the coach, uh, Steve, Stephen Apia, if he stays as a coach, I think we have, we have seen him, we have analysed him, uh, how he does things, because analysis is not only about the players. You should also analyse the, the, the coach, whether he was a defender, a midfielder, or what he prefers most in his games. So I think uh, that we have done. Uh, we are still continuing getting more clips on, on Ghana so that when you go to the match, uh, we'll have the confidence and the belief to say the team is well prepared mentally, tactically, so that we can execute our plan and uh, hopefully get uh, maximum points. Now defensively, coach Nsiki has recalled the hard tackling Cameron City club captain Tami Mkizi. Uh, you played in AFCON, played a great role in, in the team defensively. Uh, I've watched your training brilliantly, always hard running on the right. You missed out on the Nelson Mandela challenge due to an ankle injury. Uh, how's the injury coming along and how are you coming along? No, I'm getting better every day. Obviously, since I haven't been playing in, in, in the last last half. Cup two, couple of two games. So for me, the most important thing is to get back to my fitness level. So for me as a player, I'm, I'm grateful and I'm honoured to always, always be representing my national team. So I'm grateful for giving, for being given an opportunity to represent the national team. Tell me, uh, upcoming fixture up against Ghana, the Black Stars, always tough uh, against Ghana. Then Sudan back home. Then there's Sao Tropez Principe, uh, which is an unknown team in September next year. Uh, what are you expecting from the trip to Ghana? Definitely, it won't be an easy task. But then, obviously, for us, we, I know, I know from the technical team side of the national team, they, they, they've seen their videos, and we've also watched them when we played in Afcon. So, for us, it's, it's to prepare ourselves and make sure we, 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 we're ready for that competition, and then we, we deliver on the day. Now, coach Nseke will be without uh, injured midfielder Keegan Dolly, but he's got versatile left footer Tatum Keke. Uh, the man is from Kimberley. He has never found diamonds in Kimberley, but he's got four caps for the national team. <laughs> and also speechless. 
Yeah, no, no, I'm not speechless. It's just that uh, it's nice to be in the national team. Yeah, after so long. And I think uh, our coach, Benny, has helped uh, us, the guys, to be in the national team because the national coaches, they're also now interested in our players. Whereby first it was difficult for Cape Town players to, to go to the national team. So I think also it's good for us to go there and we must try also do well so that the guys from our team can also get a chance to, to be in the national team also. Natato, Coach Nseki has said that he likes your defensive ability and he's used you as a defensive midfielder. Yes, uh, the last time the first camp he selected me, he selected me as a left back. Uh, luckily, the the thing, mm, the game was cancelled because of xenophobia and stuff. So the second camp, he called me as a midfielder, and I think this camp also he called me. As, so I think he wants to use me there because he's got uh, left back, he's got Santi, and he's got Maella from Pirates also. So I think uh, as a midfielder, I need to work out to because there's a lot of good midfielders in the, in our country. So I need to do well also whenever I get a chance. Tatu, thank you so much for joining us right here on Marao TV. And all the best for the upcoming AFCON qualifiers against Ghana uh, and Sudan, which happens uh, the first week or second week in November. Yes, yeah, it's going uh, to be a very, very tough, tough week for, for South Africa as a nation because it's, uh, it's the coach's first, first serious games. So we need to at least to, to come back with, with good results. Well, there we heard it from the Cape Town based players ahead of Bafana Bafana's 2021 Afghan qualifiers against Ghana and Sudan. The fourth team in Group C is a team called Sao Tome Principe, also known as the Falcons and the True Parrots. Uh, it's an island off the west coast of Africa in the Gulf of Guinea with a population of just over 200,000. They have beaten Mauritius before. As South Africa faced Sao Tome Principe on the 4th and the 8th of September. 2020. From the Mother City, it's back to you, Robert. All right, thank you so much. Gershon Kutsia, all the way in Cape Town. You've got a former Cape Town City player right here. I think you took all the luck away from <laughs> Cape Town City. What's happening now? No, I didn't take the, the luck, Robert. I think, they, they, I think they're playing beautiful football, yeah. to be quite honest. They're just not scoring. You know, but what's me. the problem, though? I don't is know, it defensive? Is it you saying they're not scoring? Well, they're scoring, but they're the conceding. You know, but I always believe you know the best way to to defend is to attack. You yeah. know? And, and I think they've been unlucky in a couple of games. I mean, we played them twice already, and to be quite honest, they play beautiful football. But maybe they can try to cancel the beautiful football and just go for goals. You know, the sometimes it, it yeah, sometimes it works, Rob. You know, yeah. but you know it's a competitive league. Every team is so tough to beat this year, and I think. I think they'll get better. I mean, they have a very good chairman, a very good background. The whole team, the setup is, is one of the best in the country, you know. But you know why I miss honest. you, though? I miss you in Mafana Mafana. When are you coming back? <laughs> no, nah, look, obviously, when you play in the midfield, so much talent, you know. Yeah. And, and to be quite honest, you know, you just have to wait for a chance. Who's taking your place at Mafana? Uh, well, I don't know if I have a place, but yeah, I mean, like You've I said... You've got a place. You play there, what, 16 times, almost 20 caps for yeah, fun? Yeah, I did, you know, but yeah, I mean, there's so many players that have done well. But who's and, your competition? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> there's a lot of midfielders. Aye, 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 aye. Who's your competition? So I, can't, yeah, yeah. I can't point at one Name. person, you know, because it's a squad, you know. No, so I, I know think... it's a squad, but who's that guy you know, which I know? No, it's all, it's all the guys that are in the midfield. Yeah. And who's the... your best midfielder right now? In the country? Yeah. Uh, by far, Kamuhelo Mukocho, to be quite honest. That's, that's an interesting one because a lot of people don't understand Kamu's role. And yet, even at Brentford, he plays like on a regular basis. Every other game that he, he's there, he starts a game, he ends the game. What is it about him that makes him stand out for you? Uh, he, I think he does the basics right, Robert. I think that's why he stayed for so long in Europe, you know. He does the basics right and, and I think there's... One element about our football is that, you know, they want to see magic all the time. Yeah. But he's the guy that does the simple stuff, you know, for the team. I've trained with him a whole lot of times. I know him from a long time when he was still young. Technically, he's unbelievable, you know, but you have to... It's very difficult sometimes to... Under 12. Yeah. Remember, Danon, under 12, he was the captain. Exactly. They went and met Zinedine Zidane. Exactly, right. Came back with the trophy. But it's, hey. You know, it's very difficult to understand players like him. 
Bruce is not a flashy kind of guy. He's not a flashy kind of guy. I understand you. I hear you. Brilliant. I, I can see you itching to tell me who your best goalkeeper right now in South Africa is. <laughs> 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 no, get it out. You, you've been wanting to tell the entire continent and the world who the best goalkeeper currently in South Africa is. Please, go ahead. Let me not spoil you, okay? <laughs> Who's playing right now? Right now. Not talking about players that are now permanently injured or others that have retired. We're talking about right now. Who's playing? 100%. Not injured. Not injured. <laughs> Otherwise, it will only be one brilliant. Now, I'm not talking about the person who has retired. I'm talking about who's currently, currently playing. playing. Who's not injured. Who's not on three months out, six months out. No, if, they are, if they've got a PSL card and they're eligible to play. They might be slightly injured for now. They might have been sitting on the bench. They might have been wearing a strap. They might have been doing all sorts of things. But you also don't have to bring in friendship loyalty here. We want you to be independently objective. No, for me, um, I actually, like, I've got two. Okay. It's Dennis first and Itu. Okay. Dennis Unyango and Itu. So if you have a fun coach, Itu's out, like he's out right now. And you've got the three that have been selected to play. That's very easy. Who? Who's first? Ronwen. 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 And Ronwen gets injured in the 67th minute. Who do you bring in? Yes, sis. Obviously. <laughs> who's yes, sis? Who does yes, sis play for? <laughs> I, I would actually pick Darren. Darren Keith. Yeah, Darren Keith. Do we have a number three choice? Number three choice. Uh, for now, oh. I don't think that you, you, you could just take people who are 28, 29, just like Ron Wayne or, yeah. or Darren. You need, you need a youngster. You need someone who's, who's, who's fresh, young, who's going to learn the national team setup. Right. So for now, someone who's playing, it, it's, it's, it's very it's difficult. difficult. It's because I would say maybe, but now even, um, which, which, which keeper is this? Ricardo Goss? No. Hmm. But he's selected, though. He's one of the three goals. Yeah, yeah, I'll take him. I'll take him yeah. because he's playing. But it's, it's, it, for South Africa, it's, it's difficult to, to, to get a keeper. Yeah. Um, we, we, we are struggling, struggling, struggling. I think perhaps I've retired. I would look into starting my own um, goalkeeper academy. Mm. Right. Starting at a very tender age, building them up because we, we're really struggling. If you take a course, then who? Yeah. It's, it's very difficult in South Africa. You only maybe have two, one, two, who takes everything. It's been like that for years. So now maybe it's time to change the game. And I love you can that. be the game changer. I love The game changers are here on the show tonight. <laughs> and one of them is a brilliant Kuzwai. I love that spirit, though, because you've got to remember that too, Bruce went to Africa Cup of Nations in Egypt. He was the one goalkeeper who was selected and obviously one of the players who the then coach knew and understood as far as Stuart Baxter is concerned. All right, after the break, we do continue. We'll take a lot of your social media comments. Uh, make sure you do send us those tweets because Libwang Manyam is here, Kennedy Timber is here, as well as Brilliant Kuzwai is also here. It is Thursday Night Live. Oh, what a start. Welcome on board. All right, welcome back. It is Thursday night live, and of course, wonderful guest, top of the notch. I mean, if you've got a Hall of Famer amongst you, then you've got to be nervous. I hope Lebuang understands and knows. I hope Brilliant understands and knows that not too many mm -hmm. get that privilege. I don't know how close, because he's been already hitting 100 caps representing, in fact, over 100 caps representing uh, the Springboks. Mm -hmm. That's the beast of Tawarira. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be the next Hall of Famer, do you think? Whew, tough, tough one to go because World uh, Hall of Famer, by the way. Yeah, Let me qualify yeah. it. Not, not local. There's not local. Local one. Not these I, local ones. I, 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 I. 
but uh, <laughs> <laughs> too many of those that are going around. They claim it in the in the clubs that uh, maybe I'm a hall of famer, you know, yeah, at the club. But no, no, we want the real ones. Not so. the one where you drive 45 minutes. There's a nice resort there. There's exactly. also a hall of famers I know that, there. I know the one you're talking <laughs> there's about. There's another one yeah. there in the other place there, mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. local. Mm -hmm. No, no, world rugby. Do you think they felt guilty? Not that you were not, you were, you were the greatest, but I'm just saying. Mm. Do you think somewhere, somehow, world rugby would have had a sense of guilt? The fact that you were not able to play for the box? I, I think in the back of their mind, probably. And, and you look at it now, you know, you look at the beast. Yeah. These, are the, these are the reasons why I think that those incidences had to happen. And I think the, the rest of the younger ones, like Tonderai, Shvanga, yes. and Beast, then obviously learnt and, and said that, listen, there's another pathway that we can go and, you know. So, but ach, it's, it's all fair in love and war. That's, mm. that's what happens, you know. Cheson Colby brings a different dimension, and I think all round. Yeah. Spoon Kosi was criticised, I think, more for his defensive play, yeah. because we know that offensively, he's, he's been it's one of the best. He's been unstoppable. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that that was one of the points that would have reached Russ's mind and said, I've got to make a big call here. Yeah. Do you think that would have been more the defensive side? Not, not really. I think for me, Cheslin is, is probably the only player that can change the game up right. in case at some stage uh, on Saturday that uh, England do go ahead. We just need um, a player that can maybe change up the game so that you can, because he's the only threat, real threat that we have in terms of you can give him the ball and he can create anything out of nothing. And if we're going to be chasing the game, those are the types of players that we need. Now, there's a, an English scribe, if you're yeah. looking at yeah. that, he, he talks about or tries to instruct yeah. Coach Rossi Rasmus to bench Sia Colisi. Yeah. Saying that never mind the sentiments, never mind what the importance is, is of a first black Springbok captain Cap having to potentially lift the Webb Ellis Trophy. He says, bench him for sentimental reasons, leave him on the bench. Yeah. I, when I read the article, I didn't know whether he was playing that psychological warfare kind of game mm. or he was really being serious, but he put some decent points yeah. that were there. But really, no? No, 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 no. no I think it, uh, there's much uh, little tactical, you know, games, mind games that are going on. Because I think they know that they, they, they might be, there's a certain edge that Sia brings to the team. And it may not be in, in, in tactical gameplay. And they say Francois Lowe is going to help with turnovers and that kind yeah. of stuff. But no, there's, there's something more bigger than that. And I think that's what they're worried about. We had that Madiba... Uh, influence in 95 and they may just be worried that Sia might bring the same with that and that you can't you can't play against it's it's something that's bigger than the game unbelievable so think, yeah though, they, they're, more, they're more worried about that but yes we need to sort him out yeah I know they use the word Delela quite a lot in Parliament but no no no, no. <laughs> let's 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 calm down with that one <laughs> big derby at the Moses Mabita Stadium, Telcom knockout. I mean, Chiefs and Pirates are almost going to, people are going to confuse each other. Next thing, Leboang will be wearing a Pirates jersey because he doesn't quite know now which one he has. It's this weekend. It's again the following week at the FNB Stadium. You've been at training. I know that Frosler, we saw him injured in the game in Pretoria. He didn't train today. Bacchus as well. well. What's the latest injury-wise? Uh, I think the, the, the guys that are completely out, I yeah. think on Saturday, it's, it's Reeve and Bacchus. Yeah. Bacchus obviously had that injury, I think, in the Cape Town City game. You know, and he hasn't been, he hasn't even started training with us, but I think he started jogging this week. Right. Which is a good sign, so probably after the international break, probably be back. And yeah, Reeve has had problems with his hamstring for a couple of weeks now, but he's been pushing on, pushing on, and as you see, I mean, if you look at last week's first goal, he's, he's so important to the team with what he brings. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's other guys, you know, that have come in. Jabulo Plomis came in at that right back position, played very well. We yeah. still have the experienced guys, Rama. And Plom saved two goals for you guys, man. Exactly. So, so yeah, I mean, we, we <coughs> still join, you know, but obviously we're going to miss both of them, you know. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many quality players. That do, you, do you sort of tell me something, though? Just make sure that the other guys don't hear. <laughs> um, just, just between you and I. When you speak to Castro, did 
Did he touch? Did he touch the ball? No, he didn't touch the ball. Rob. He didn't. He says he didn't touch the ball. But so when you ask him, what does he say? He says no, he didn't touch the ball at all. At all. You believe him? I yes, he's my teammate. I believe him. So when you see the slow mos that people have been watching over and over again, people have been deliberating and saying, "Hey, his little hair might have touched." <coughs> I don't know what. But when you see it with the naked eye, what do you make of it? Uh, to be quite honest, with the naked eye, it looks like he touched the ball. Yeah. Yeah. But so uh, guess, I also saw it from yeah. behind. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it looks like that. But he says he didn't touch the ball, and and obviously there came in a whole lot of pictures, and you know, with but the some shadow. shadows that show that the ball was not even on his head. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, but it is what it is, Robert. I mean, football is a controversial sport at times. So move on. <laughs> move on. We take it. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. I don't know, but anyway, let's leave the controversy aside. Chiefs Pirates. It, it's. Let, let's touch on the fact that this man prime of his career, making a move that very few people make in their lifetime. You can only count a very, you know, a handful, whether it's a Max Mapunyane, uh, you know, how many other players? Jimmy Tao. Jimmy Tao, who have been Lesuma, there. Lesuma. Yeah. Lesuono no Machoro. Machoro was there. Pelenu Mvete, Chabupule. Yeah. Also the late Mark Batchelor. Yes. Also, also did the same way he played for both. That's why I'm saying that it's a, it's a handful, but very few get the privilege of being able to don both jerseys of the great Soweto rivals and giants. And he did the same thing. But now, as I was saying, in the prime of his career, unable to play football. Cut short. I think it was in July when the world got to know that you can't play anymore. Mm -hmm. Have you come to terms with that, though, Brilliant? Because it, it's a difficult thing, especially when it's a forced way of saying goodbye to the good game. <laughs> um, uh, the moment um, um, I, I announced it in, in to the world that um, I'm no more going to play football, um, uh, I accepted it. Um, it it's life. It, so, so many things happen in life in general that you, you can't control. Yeah. Something that you can't control, you let God take it. So for me, I've been in acceptance to it because if I don't accept the reality, I would live in pain. Now, when you live in pain, you become mediocre. So I don't think it's something that I wish to be. So for me, it's moving on to another chapter. It's like an eagle. An eagle lives two lives. Mm. So there's a time of, of, of transition to, for it to, to change or to, it goes through pain for six months. Mm. So for me, it was more like that. Now it's time for me to get out of the field and do certain things outside the field and still continue to serve as I was serving to the people and that was football people. So I'm still going to continue serving them. For me, it's all about serving, whether I'm on the field or I'm off the field. Oh, man. You know, if I was in a crowd or at a theater, I'd be giving a standing ovation for just those words. And the one thing that he did, and he made sure that he came back for this show, he was in Durban yesterday, and where they made him a massive ambassador of a very good cause. He'll tell us more about that cause and a whole lot more. Don't go anywhere. It's a Thursday, Thursday Night Live. I'm very pleased and uh, it's a big honor for me because uh, I will be the first French referee to referee a World Cup final. So it's a big privilege for me. I want to thank you, uh, World Rugby, to give me the opportunity to ref the final. Alain, Alain Roland, the manager, and all the staff, all the managers who work with Alain. And all the, the referees who was um, with uh, me during uh, two months. I think it's a, it's a team effort, it's a teamwork. So, for me, just uh, fantastic. Uh, it was a fantastic experience in Japan. We are here since uh, two months, so we we, we find some um, fantastic people who work with us, and um, Japanese people are, are very friendly, and uh, we spent two really good months here. Um, the stadium was fantastic. Um, everything was perfect. Uh, so it was a really great experience. I was here in 2009 for the World Cup Under 20, 10 years ago. And uh, it was my first experience, but I think this World Cup uh, was an amazing World Cup. So I just want to thank um, all the Japanese people, all the, the volunteers who worked very hard for us. Um, the, the, everything was perfect, so I, I just said 
a big thank you for, for Japan. Jerome, 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 please, Jerome, <laughs> Jerome, please. I know the relationship that South Africa has with you is not the greatest, but Jerome, please. When you heard that he was going to be the referee for the final, what went through your mind? There's be honest. Uh, yeah, there's a song somewhere, Erica Badu or something, they say, they call me a Jerome or something. When <laughs> I saw that, I said, can she call Jerome to go to the States so that she can, he can just get away from Japan? But um, funny enough, you know, when this World Cup started, the refs were taking centre stage yeah. because uh, uh, World Rugby changed the rules, I think, two weeks within to the competition, and that just cause chaos so all the refs were just under pressure because of the high tackle in this but i think the teams have now adjusted and it seems to be that um, the you know the focus is taken away from the referee so he's going to get a lot of help from 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 the tmo yeah. and the side ref so he might not have to make so many big decisions and we know that um, there's a there's a reason why rassi went and got some french players the guys that are based there Dwayne and them because they can speak a bit of french so that when things get tough they can just say we oui, we oui, monsieur prefer you know do whatever yeah. Yeah, they need yeah. to do so they can get it <laughs> get it going because uh, Garcia's can tend to be a bit of a, a hothead. So yeah, because we'll the see. records are great though. We've only won five yeah. games, lost ten when this man has been in charge as a referee. Mm. I don't know. Who's the worst referee in the PSL? I don't know their names. You don't know their names? Okay, because you're a current player, you can't tell me. <laughs> Who's the worst referee? <laughs> Brilliant. Who's the worst? I don't know. No, but you, you, you can't you're say no it. longer a player. <laughs> no, I don't know. He can tell me and I'll say it. <laughs> you whisper to no, yeah. I, I don't know their names. No, but who's given you the worst experience uh, as a ref? I, I haven't had the worst experience. I've always been a good boy. No red cards? Never. Not one? Not one. Ever? No. But almost. <laughs> Red. <laughs> I've always been a, a good bad boy. A good bad boy. Okay, that's going to be his new label. <laughs> good bad boy. Look out for the clothing <laughs> range that's going to be coming out. Now, the, the one thing that today has been very busy about is all about uh, press conferences, telecom knockout. And we heard yesterday, in fact, uh, when uh, Ernst Middendorp was talking about I think the journalists were being a bit naughty, but very good. It's nice to be naughty. Asking him about what, they, what he thinks about Rolandim Mkwena. And he answered in a certain way. So maybe firstly, let's hear what Ernest Middendorp had to say in the build-up to this major, major crunch game called the Soweto Derby. I think actually, of course, they have a three line. They have inverted uh, wingers. They have uh, double ten. They have double triangle left and right. They have uh, three box three, uh, a midfield box. Uh, uh, we can go into it with inverted fullbacks and um, converting uh, former wingers to fullbacks. Uh, we can put names into it. It's it's a very huge. Uh, portfolio of, uh, of uh, stuff, what's coming on there. But this is, this is uh, it's fine, it's okay. Oh, Ernst Bidendo. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh, we, we don't know. We've never worked with this man. I've worked with him in a studio setup, analyzing Africa Cup of Nations, World Cups, you know, Champions League. You get to work with him every day. You see him in the tracksuit, you see him in the suit, you see him being the gentleman. That Brilliant was talking about, and you see him lose his mind. What's it like working with Ernest Middendorp, and what has he brought into your game that has improved, especially your strengths as far as the midfield is concerned? Uh, I think one thing he's, he's emphasized that the, and the team ever since he's got there, you know, for me on a personal note, it's so the ability to be versatile because he plays so many formations. And I think you've seen a couple of weeks, every team that we've played against, he's gone to the stadium, you know, he goes into every detail. He doesn't want to miss anything, you know, and, and yeah, I mean, I think uh, I've worked with somebody like him before with Coach Mushin, you know, yes. I know they're very aggressive in their approach, you know, but yeah, I mean, when a coach is aggressive, then you have to be cool. And I think that's where we found the balance this year, you know, that he wants us to, to just take the, the knowledge that he gives us, you know, but also be cool, you know, and, and yeah, I mean, when you're coming to a big game like this, you, you need to be very level headed, you know. And I mean, I won't say luckily, but we we went to Cape Town. We had to go to Sundowns. Yeah. Now we have to go to Devon to face Pirates. You know, so think of these kind of games, like he was saying. You know, it's, it's with so much talent on the field, in terms of attacking. It's a matter of I think who's gonna be 
more very, I think, uh, how can I say this, smarter off the ball, you know, because th when it comes, it's very easy to attack Rob, you know, to go forward when you have the ball, it's very easy. But now when you don't lose the ball, what happens? Those moments, that moment, that five seconds, you know, and I think we're facing a team that's very good in that in that uh, department, you know, but yeah, we've already planned, you know, and hopefully What's the plan? <laughs> What's the plan? There's no Pirates guys here. There's a former, but not one current. <laughs> No, Rob, like, uh, I think the, the most important thing from the season started is to never give up, you know, in these kind of games. You know, you never know how it will go, you know, but yeah, I mean, never give up. I think it's been our spirit. We fight for everything because we have the talent, I mean, to be quite honest. To go forward, we can go forward at any time, you know, but it's, it's the work as a team that we lacked, I think, last year. To the lack, uh, but yeah, though, yeah. This is where you guys were lacking, I think, more, <laughs> was upstairs. Not, not saying that you don't have, yeah. but it's it's the mentality in approaching a football game yeah. that you needed somebody with the, like you're saying, we're seeing a very calm Middendorp because he used to be more animated, similar to Machine on the bench. But right now, he couldn't be bothered on the bench. He just he sits there quietly, doesn't really lose his mind, which is maybe a good thing from where we're sitting and reading the whole thing. I don't know from players' perspective, what happens in the change room? Maybe gets in there and slams the door, takes his shoes off. I don't know what happens. <laughs> no, nah, he's very calm. No, he's very calm now. You nah, know, but, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, but yeah, like Rob, like you, like you say, man. I mean, the mentality is very important. You know that you you have to go fight for everything. You know, in these kind of games, I mean, because sometimes, to be quite honest, the, you can have all the talent, but if you don't go and fight for 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 something in these kind of games, then you come up very short. But yeah, I think we've, we've had a very productive week and obviously, hopefully, we, we finish it on a high. It's an amazing week that it's been for Kaiser Chiefs, though, because in seven days, they've been able to play Sundowns. They play Orlando Pirates. They play Chipper United. Then they play Orlando Pirates again. Somewhere in between, this man's going to lose it. Uh, let's find <laughs> out what uh, coach Roland Mkwene... Hey, it's his first away to Derby as the head coach of Orlando Pirates. Remember that. Here are his thoughts. Yeah, we face a difficult team, a uh, strong team uh, in Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, of course, a rival that is uh, unbeaten in the last five. Uh, structurally very well organized, uh, very well drilled, uh, with a very strong technical team and uh, a lot of very good individuals that uh, in different moments can can turn the result for them. Uh, so, so we know what's ahead and uh, we've done our analysis and we 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 as prepared as as we go into most of uh, our fixtures. Okay, that's Rolani Mkwena. What about the formations, though? Because that's been quite key as far as Kaiser Chiefs are concerned. And Ernest Budendorp would know that Chiefs top of the table, cup competitions, the fans are dying for some form of silverware from both of these clubs. So you talk about four and five seasons, respectively. Where are the trophies? They are not there. And the fans want them. They're not talking about pre-season, off-season, in between season where you're going to play, I don't know, to win a goat or something. But they're talking <laughs> about like proper stuff, yeah. Let's find out though from Coach Middendorp what the formation, especially for this game, is going to be like. In the end, uh, we have to see where the holes, we have to see where the gaps, we have to see uh, are we going more, not skipping uh, the lines, or are we going more left flank or right flank, uh, what is uh, the opponent's uh, strong side or strong direction, independent on, on three or four defense line or two strikers, what they played in the end of the game last night with Mango and Mabaso. I think it was quite successful then. So that's, that's something uh, to know, to be prepared, and, and then, of course, preparing the players, as I said before, give them tools that can happen. That is something uh, what we have to expect. I was expecting Afonso on, on uh, last Sunday from the starting uh, 11 after scoring, after being uh, involved in a successful game against Highlands Park. But uh, good, then it comes different, and we are preparing ourselves for different moments, for different uh, scenarios, um, and the players are aware about it to handle it. It's, it's different pressures though, brilliant. When you're looking at how these two teams have prepared themselves for the derby, how are you seeing the game given the fact that it's a knockout game firstly? Uh, for, for me, understanding both cultures of the teams, mm. um, I'm, I'm very close to Coach Rulani also. Uh, 
I know their game plan. I, you know it's it? Been, it's, mm. it's very so why exciting. haven't you told us the game plan? I mean, really, you can't just... <laughs> no, 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 I can't do that. No, I can't Kennedy, do that. just reveal. I, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but for both teams, it's going to be a tough one. But knowing the players, just the players, both the Gutsi Bonabaganjan in terms of mentality, it's going to be a difficult one. But for young stars, I want them to, to, to enjoy the game and enjoy the moment. It's not going to come again. I wish I was still on the field. To, I can to, tell, man. Eh? So <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to be a tough yeah. one. But both, 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 both teams have, 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 have good players. Yeah. Mentality, they, they are there. Stop Men right there. Stop right there. You talk about both. I'm going to ask you for two. One or two from each side. So the two players are Chiefs right now who for you, if the season were to end now, would be your football of the season. Who two have impressed you? Which of the two? Um, <laughs> one. Uh -huh. Number one, yeah. And Tower. Hey, he's scoring that guy. Yeah. So he could be top goal scorer by the end of he's, the season. He's always been like that. I think uh, different coaches, they like different styles. That's what they last season. He, 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 he kept the huh? faith there, he fell in again. Oh, <laughs> nobody came <laughs> back. I understand. Okay, great. So, Manyama as well as Tower, Matoa. What about Orlando Pirates? Um, it has to be Umabasa. Uh -huh. um, in the middle, that's But I can't say goalkeepers. I would, I would put it to leadership, Gahibi. Jalen, no? Yes. Okay. All right. The two players from Pirates that you think are brilliant right now? Mm. Not my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, brilliant as in the two danger men. The the two, two. No, no, not, not him, not yeah? Him. But just the two guys who I'm sure have been on the lips of Ernest a lot this week. Be careful of this one. Be careful of that one. Be careful of. And and just for you, mm. who are the two standout players at the moment at Pirates? Um, I think to for me personally, you know, well the coach hasn't mentioned it, but obviously Lodge is a, always not a nuisance in a bad way, but he's always busy. Yeah. You know, and I think the striker, the new striker, has done well. The Mawaso has done well, but I think one player that we don't give. I don't know if people ignore his, his work rate, you know, but I think Ben Mutari does a perfectly good job for Pirates in terms of covering both ends of the field, you know. So, so yeah, I'd, I'd say Lodge and Mutari, they're, they're always sticking it up for the team, you know, and yeah, and yeah obviously <laughs> we know very well about them. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's all under Pirates. There's so many players that you can... We can talk, we can talk all day, and I mean, the quality is so high there. So, yeah, okay. we would I think fair for enough. anything. It's a great analysis, and, and the beauty about it is that you can choose as well, wherever you're watching this broadcast from, who for you has really stood out. Um, Rulani Mkwen also just kind of explaining to us in a similar way that uh, Ennis Middendorp was explaining the tactics, because such scholars of the game, and, and, and you know, and the irony there, if you remember and you go back again, to Maritzburg United, Ennis Middendorp is there as the head coach. Who does he give a chance to, to be his assistant? He gives it to Fadlu Davids. Where's Fadlu Davids coaching now? He's sitting as an assistant to Rulani Mkwen. Hey, Rulani, help us, Bob. No, we can't change the world. Uh, we can only adapt to the circumstances that we are faced and the challenges that we are faced with. We, we know the, the current uh, situation that we are in uh, and we know we know what needs to be done uh, the fortunate part is that we've got a lot of very experienced players we've got a very very good group and an and honest group of players uh, and we've set certain standards for ourselves and we know that we regardless of what happens after 90 minutes we know that or in this case 120 minutes we know that uh, there are certain technical, tactical, psychological elements that we cannot uh, compromise on. The players know that. Uh, so fortunately for us, that's, that's, that's our blueprint. That's our way of working. And we've set, we've set benchmarks with regards to that. And 
and we don't we don't compromise on that and and fortunately we've got uh, like i say to you experienced players that are able to make sure that they extend that onto the pitch uh, and and assist us particularly when you've got so, so many of these younger ones monyane mabasa uh, the younger ones have a very good environment which which allows them to to grow and to to become better because you can't ask for for more when you've got uh, senior players that regardless of the scenario or situation one they don't compromise on 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 the standards of 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 our technical tactical preparations all right that's all about tactical technical preparation all right let's quickly break away because i i, I want to know from your side talking about kicking and that's what uh, football is about now on the on the rugby sphere of things i mean you've seen the Dialandis coming to the fore, playing extremely well. I mean, we haven't even touched on Magazola Mapimbi, who's also, you know, been wonderful. Yeah. We've seen line-out throws 100% only up until last week where we missed just on one occasion, yeah. you know. So that, for me, stood out as being a hallmark in the Rugby World Cup where, hey, South Africa would have been criticised when it came to line-out throws, but those have been perfect. Not a worry whatsoever for coach Rassi Erasmus. But Faf has been criticised quite a bit as far as the kicking game, uh, kicking, kicking all the time. Yeah. But is he following a certain game plan that Rassi wants where getting the ball into opposition, players coming through, closing them down and possibly winning possession at the end? Mm. So funny enough <clears throat> that... Um, a lot of people are walking around saying there's a rugby team playing a soccer team. <laughs> 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 Mentioning that the Fuff and Vili are kicking so much ball. Yeah. But fun, the thing is that uh, we've made it to the final using this method. And different teams have got different tactics. And uh, I mean, we can hear from the derby here that the guys are about tactics and how they work it. Um, it's worked so far because I think Rassi believes that we are better without the ball. So maybe that's why he opts to kick it. But the difference is that uh, you've got to be accurate in that kicking and this is probably why um, I mean Faf, he kicks maybe 40 percent accuracy so that's where the problems uh, arise and we haven't yet played a team that's able to counter that I think Japan mm. they they were sort of at the end of their dream road and just a word out to them they've put a, a wonderful World Cup out yeah. I think it's been excellent the stadiums have been full and it's just been full of culture and it's been a good World Cup in terms of that uh, Wales also broken that eight players from their starting team out so they couldn't counter the game but I think this England team is really prepared for that kicking game and if we can't if we try it and it doesn't work my worry is that we haven't been able to go anywhere else from that so i'm, I'm not going to see herschel herschel jenkins i'm not going to see him <laughs> again i mean this is a man who won us the championship you know and he's he's an exciting player and i think we're going to see the benefits of him in four years time but if you don't give him a, a, enough experience now yeah it's going to be sad but um but I be think, honest though kennedy yeah who's the better player between the two oh in in it's difficult. Eh? Is, it, is, is it, one it, better it, coming off as a, a, a bomb squad member? Yeah, yeah, well, the bomb squad has got their own little uh, yeah. tactics, but I think Faf in this type of game plan and pressure rugby, he's able to get it. He's, he's much better because he's got that timing in terms of defense, and he's always, when the game speeds up, he can start running the ball. Although we haven't tried to, to move the ball around a bit, um, he's a little bit better. And just you don't want to spoil that inexperience of of Yankees now, because if he doesn't perform well, that's him gone. We've seen a lot. Ambrose Papier was the star player last year. He's nowhere now. So we've just got to almost be careful with the younger players. And it's a World Cup final. And we, you know that uh, those things are, are a game of inches. And mm. just one wrong error, you, you, you cry for it and you come back. And the airport, instead of being full, you've got guys that are waiting for you, yeah. trying to stone you, and it's it's difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you know the position, uh, brilliant. You, when you're playing hooker, not. Would you like to know? I would like to know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. <you're so> <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, okay. I don't know how good you, you. You're a goalkeeper, so you should have been able to hold the ball nicely, throw it within line of the spin of the ball and get it to a man that's a couple of meters uh, further down. And that is what we've been able to do brilliantly. I don't know with the Togio being there now, yeah. uh, that's going to be different. He was man of the match the, uh, you know, in the last game for England. For sure. That's going to be part of the difficulty though, is that are we going to get that clean ball every time 
we throw. Yeah, that's the challenge. And that's where we start talking about the coaches, Eddie Jones, yeah. and he, he got another head coach where egos weren't about clashing. He said, I want to win regardless of what happens. And if John Mitchell's going to help me with defense, that's where they really have got the set phases set. Yeah. That's where they killed New Zealand. New Zealand couldn't win any of their set phases and they were just under pressure. Well, they there. killed him from the hacker. Yeah. You know, just... That, that yeah. yeah, oh yeah, the V. So I'm thinking, I'm hoping Rassi has got some sort of... Uh, Counter, for, counter for, <laughs> for whatever Eddie Jones is going to do because he's a, he's a shrewd tactician and, and a clever coach, you know. Yeah. But the kicking, again, we're speaking about soccer here. Yeah. The kicking is going to be important for, for poles. I mean, Farrell is the most accurate kicker. I mean, he's we got to the World Cup and I think he had missed five out of like 300 kicks or something like that. Oh, true. So he's yeah. he's deadly accurate. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Pollard is also coming to, and we need him to kick well. And you know that he tends to miss some of these important kicks in, in big matches. High profile games. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and that's you why know. the beginning of the tournament was not uh, Andre Pollard's tournament. Yeah, yeah. It got better. Yes. But we always go back to the start. Do you yeah. think the the loss against All Blacks was, was, was kind of delivers a kind yeah, of yeah, in, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, group, no, we'll but... we'll take that. Okay. We're not gonna, right. we're not gonna, <laughs> we're not even talking about that loss. But uh, yeah, it's worked out well for us. That's what you can say. All right. So he's gonna tell us when we come to the end of the show uh, who will be winning between Orlando Pirates as well as Kaiser Chiefs Kennedy Timber. Oh, He'll sure. be the the man who brings the sanity here on Thursday <laughs> night. Live. Don't go anywhere. Still so much more to discuss and also to hear from the coaches. All right, so if they say one on one, what does that mean? Brilliant. Hey. Hashtag one on one. It, someone's got to score or someone's got to save the ball. Yeah. So I pick in and jingle manch. Lamangam. I get gunjal. Winaban. May the best team win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, quickly just whisper to us. In Durban, you were telling me when you were there that, uh, that it was an important day, something was happening, ambassadorship. Do you want to inform the, the viewers quickly? Um, in, in, in Devon, um, they've got, um, in KZN actually, they've got um, Masalga games. So all sports codes, 16 sports codes, they get together in one city and play those games. So this time around, um, they've decided, um, they opted for me to be the ambassador of these games and show these young boys or young girls how, does it, how much does it take to get there. If I, if I can inspire them, yeah. I, I did say before, it's, I'm a server. Right. That's all I need. Ah. He was a, a blocker before, now he's a server. Mm -hmm. He's a versatile man, this one. <laughs> eh? He's not one dimensional, and we like that. I can't afford him. I was going to ask him to be part of a panel on Marawa TV. But yeah, we're still negotiating. Tough negotiations. <laughs> this is very, very expensive, this man. And he wants to be paid in dollars. Can be paid. <laughs> right? Zoom dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what you say there, <laughs> you might not see hope. Um, from your side, I mean, our cameras were training yesterday, picked up on one player, Nokovic. He was injured, out for about two weeks or so, came back, scored two goals. I think he was just scoring a goal per week that he was out injured, he was paying back. Um, <laughs> what kind of guy? He just seems like a fun guy, Uma Piano. Uh, a very relaxed guy, you know, he was... Obviously, he was a bit uh, in his shell when he came in, you know, but I think the guys have worked him very well. He's very good friends with George. I think that's where he listens to all the, the pianos, <laughs> you know. But yeah, a very hardworking guy. He, he works so hard for the team, and, and I think we're going to see a whole lot more from him. But Is yes. he going to be the difference come Saturday? Um, I think as a group, we have to be a difference first yeah. before an individual, sure. you know. So we have to also help him. He can do anything, he can do everything on his own, you know, but yeah, he works very hard for the team. And then I think you've seen, I mean, he's always fighting. He's been had an operation already three months into the country. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, up, he's yeah. stitching up, you know, his head. So, yeah. I mean, if somebody stitches there, then you know that they're always ready for a battle. But yeah, so far, so good for him and I'm so happy for him. 
No, he's doing very, very well indeed. And, and, and you were telling me off air the, the, what the score is going to be. Do you just want to repeat that for everybody? No, I didn't say anything about this. <laughs> I said I hope football wins because it's going to be a solo. Well, that game. sounds like a politician. Are <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys going to win? I said football must win because the stadium aye, is aye, sold aye, out. Aye, aye, win. Please, football will be on the field. Start your new job. team. No, brother. Yes. Ask him. Ask him brilliant. The fans want to know. Are Ask him. going to win. Football is going to win. Brilliant. Please get started with your new job. Ask him the question. Who's going to win? Who's going to win the no. game? Is it Chiefs? We're going, we're going to play for a win, obviously. Okay. Are you confident that you guys can take it? We are going to play for a win. Okay. Okay. He's, he's anchoring now. <laughs> we have run out of time, you know, so it's a, it's, but he couldn't it's the brilliant show. But he could t-shirt. You said Chiefs were part of You said he's going to wear both. <laughs> I'm like this. Do you want to ask him? You say, I'm can like you this. ask him? Please. I'm like this. Uh, which side are you on? Like, oh, both you see, that dodgy both side. side. Ah. <laughs> yeah? You're signing an acronym. All right, Kennedy, you need to bring sanity to this. To this yeah. yeah. Um, I think when South Africa played against uh, Japan, mm. went to halftime, it was 5-3. Yeah. Mm. I thought to myself, what on earth? Yeah. You know, I know the lady in Cape Town said South Africa will win 2 1, but that's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but firstly, with the box, yeah. how large a margin and who will be carrying the Web Ellis Trophy? Um, so by, by four points. So I'm going for a, a four point box victory mm -hmm. purely because the Springboks have never lost in a final. Uh, and for me, there's been a whole lot of stats. That one is the one that stands out for me. So I'm, I'm going to go with that one. So a box by, by four, it's going to be tough, though. It's going to be very, very tough. And you've got Franz Stein, the only one that's won the World Cup. He's going to be coming off again mm -hmm. as a bomb squad member. Yeah. He was there in 2007. It's 12 years later. He was only 20 years old back then. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine, he wants to be in the same mold as Abo Osturand, so, yeah. you know, who were able to do it in 95 and repeat the feat again. Mm. So, you know what, Chiefs Pirates, you don't have to say anything. Mm. If it's going to be Chiefs, just put your, your yeah, hand this, on this one. If right. it's going to be on Pirates, then put, yeah, where he last played okay. was for Pirates. So just put your hand, that's all. You don't have to say a word. Can I give a score? Can give the score, the score first. Okay. What's the score going to be? It's going to be 2-1. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, for Kennedy's prediction, and he's always right. <laughs> I'm always right. I haven't been wrong. So, yeah. Yep. yeah. He's always right. So he's just going to lay his hand. It was part-time he's a pastor. Uh, but let's hey, see. The camera is where the camera is. Okay, the camera will go to a three shot, and uh, they'll allow you There to we go. <laughs> <There's Elena. laughs> All right, three one. It's going to be to Kaiser Chiefs. Thank you so much, Hall of Faber Kennedy Tiba yeah. for coming through and That's being good. with us. That's good. Really appreciated it. Oh, thank you. The brilliant one. All the time. Stay strong, man. You're such oh, a yeah. positive influence. Unbelievable. Yeah, he would have broken down, but the man has got this fighting spirit within him. And of course, what do we do at the end of the show? Because. We still got to find a name for this gentleman here. We have to do something crazy. So the, I've already done something crazy. I've got to drop something, punch something, <laughs> lift something. So I, I've already done my part. And we're looking for a name for him. So if you're watching and you have a name, because we're interactive like that, please give us a name. We had a name early on. It starts with an A and ends with an N. But we decided we're going to cool down with that one until you give him a name. And there's a purpose for him. Mr. Banyam, good to see you, as always. Good to see you too, Mr. He says you're going to win by three goals to one. So please don't disappoint. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to the entire crew right here on Thursday Night Live, I want to thank you so much indeed for being part of history for the very first episode of the show. Be part of many more to come. Simply go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, tell your next door neighbor, their friends and everybody else where it's going to be happening every single Thursday. Don't miss the next one. Give us a name as well. <laughs>